Welcome to the de Havilland Aircraft Museum. Our mission is to make sure that future generations get the opportunity to find out about de Havilland's contribution to innovative aviation technology. To do that, we make use of artifacts and aircraft that you can see. We've got no less than three mosquitoes, we've got uh, two vampires, we've got parts of Comet and various other aircraft as well. Where possible, we'll show you the aircraft. But in some cases, we can't show you the aircraft because they're just simply not available. Maybe for some aircraft, the production run was too small, early ones were scrapped, or they're just no longer available to us. In such circumstances, we have to rely just on videos and photographs. But we don't want to miss such iconic aircraft. And one such aircraft that we need to tell you about is this one here, the famous DH-95 Flamingo. It was an innovative step forward in aviation technology, and it was Churchill's favorite aeroplane. So the idea behind the Flamingo was to create a medium range aircraft capable of carrying, say, 20 passengers on a reasonable medium distance. Now at that time, the aircraft that would have fulfilled that sort of role would have been the Dragon Rapide, similar to the one that we're actually restoring at the museum today. But that could only carry six or eight passengers. Even the largest successor plane, the DH Express airliner, that could only carry 10 passengers. So the Flamingo was considerably larger. But it also broke the mould in other ways. It was the first all-metal aircraft that de Havilland built using stress skin technology. It had split flaps. It had retractable undercarriage. It was powered by two powerful Bristol Perseus engines. By May 1939, this aircraft was being used by Jersey Airlines and they were using the prototype to fly between the Channel Islands and the UK. So successful was that flight that they started ordering other planes and the production line for the Flamingo began to open up. Unfortunately, however, this was 1939. War was looming and everything was going to change. When war broke out, the Flamingo was taken over by 24 Squadron RAF. One specific mission that they had to perform. Near the time of the fall of France, it was necessary to liaise with the French government. And Churchill was carried over by a Flamingo over to the French capital in order to discuss with the French authorities what the future of the war would look like. According to some reports, the Flamingo was Churchill's favorite aeroplane. But there was something else that the Flamingo was needed for as well. In those dark days of 1940, there was a real risk that Britain would collapse. And so arrangements were made to take the royal family away from the country to Canada so that if Britain were to suffer invasion, the royal family could carry on a government in exile and mobilise the Commonwealth in order to be able to retake the country. For that mission, the Flamingo was put on standby as part of what became known as the King's Flight. Fortunately, that didn't become necessary. So from 1939, with Britain at war, priorities had to change in the de Havilland factory. The military had been very impressed by the Flamingo. In fact, they had put in a provisional order for 40 of them, tuned to specific military specifications, and called the Hertfordshire. Rather a nice name, bearing in mind Hatfield was in Hertfordshire. Unfortunately, that all changed. The Air Ministry told de Havilland that they needed to focus on other things. The Hertfordshire contract was cancelled. De Havilland had to focus on building Tiger Moths 
to train future Spitfire pilots, Airspeed Oxfords to train future bomber pilots and navigators. So unfortunately, the Flamingo production line was closed down. The few remaining aircraft, there were only 16 of them, were used by BOAC for managed services, say, for example, to the Middle East, but not many of them were used. The RAF had a few as well, but after heavy usage during the early part of the war, many of them were scrapped. By the end of the war, there were very few of them left over. The last remaining Flamingo, as far as we know, survived until 1954, when it itself was scrapped. So we don't have any remains of this wonderful aircraft still available to us, only the photographs. The Flamingo marked a turning point in de Havilland's development. It had been designed by Ron Bishop, who it was his first job as chief designer. It introduced all metal, stress skin, retractable undercarriage, slotted flaps and so on, very much pointing the way to future aircraft development. It wasn't a perfect aircraft. BOAC had some criticisms about it as far as its handling was concerned under certain environmental conditions. There's no doubt a certain amount of development work was needed, but it was designed for mass production, for ease of maintenance, for ease of use, and to be a cost-effective medium-range airliner. As such, it showed its way into the future. Thank you for watching this video about this little known but very significant aircraft from the de Havilland stable. As we mentioned, the only evidence we have of this aircraft these days are videos and photographs like this that you can see at the museum. Do check out our website and come down, not only to look at these photographs, but also to look at other aircraft which Ron Bishop and his team designed, including no less than three Mosquitoes and including the original Mark I Comet airliner. You can also visit our shop where you can buy various other goods, including a badge for the museum. Check out our website for visiting times and we'll see you at the museum.